Um, you can have even mobile phone handsets that have the same processing power that PCs used to have in the past. And the software in them as well is as complex. More problem, the more complex software you have, the more programming errors you will have, and the more you will have also those that are security related. So co software complexity, communication interface complexity, those all drive towards having more security problems as well. When you have communication standards, when you have standards how software interacts, it also enables that uh, one attack can attack uh, software developed by different vendors. It also means that if someone when one vendor has a monopoly in some situation, it definitely will attract worms. So if you are uh, imagining what are the next playgrounds for worms and virus-like attacks, you can see it from uh, the penetration of software. It can be a cell phone manufacturer, it can be an antivirus manufacturer, it can be anything that you have or most of the people have installed on their uh, communication devices. Uh, all networks are merging together. Everything is internet connected. You can control uh, nuclear, nuclear power plants over internet. You can uh, make voice over IP calls to close traditionally closed networks. Everything is nowadays internet connected. And devices are also scattered around. You don't know where the actual attacker is. You don't know who it is. You don't know what kind of device they are using. So there will be lots of work on the security area in the future as well. Security testing is one category where you try to eliminate the number of security related problems in software. You cannot get rid of all bugs, but you can prioritize them. You can make risk analysis and try to get at least the worst ones out as early as possible. What we have nowadays is different kind of, for example, certifications. So if you are developing, for example, uh, a device or building a network, you can certify it to be of some uh, accepted security level. Um, most of these still, most of these certifications have nothing to do with software quality. If you take common criteria, for example, it only verifies that you have the listed security mechanisms present. It doesn't go into analyzing the quality of the software. It's going there, it's getting there, but it's not at the moment. Um, telecommunication terms like carrier grade, which means that the box should be as stable as possible. It has like five nines or six nines of reliability. But if you consider that from security perspective, one flaw is all it takes and anyone anywhere can disable that box repeatedly. It, it doesn't really seem like a reliable device when you are connected to hostile networks. It might apply if you have a machine room in a closed network with big letters on the box saying don't touch and it might stay up that reliably, but not in hostile networks. Um, some metrics of uh, security or product security um, come from, for example, penetration testing or hacker testing. So if you measure um, if you take a bunch of consultants or security experts and ask them to revise or measure the security of a device or software, how you can do that is measure their motivation, how much money you give them, skill, time, and from that uh, equation get an assurance level, how much motivation, skill, time, the, uh, for example, hackers would require to find similar kind of problems. So if you can give them a year and think that hackers also will start looking for easier targets after spending that much time on it. Of course, it means that the people you are protecting against will find other easier targets. Some people might be so motivated in finding problems that they just don't give up. And then these metrics don't apply. Learning from quality assurance tools in general 
when you take an engineering approach to it, you start developing automated testing tools for repeated and neutral approach for comparing the security. Different security testing types can be simply categorized in black box testing and white box testing. You have levels of gray in between, but simplified you have black and white box. In black box testing, you don't care about the source code at all. In white box, you take all benefits that you can have from the availability of source code. Um, these are numbered from one to six. Unfortunately, that's also um, sometimes the case how people prioritize this. Everyone does conformance testing, at least in some sense. They verify that requirements are fulfilled. If you promise to do something, you also do that. When you st start doing conformance against industry standards, for example, security standards, then you get into security testing as well. But otherwise, if you stop at verifying that you have the necessary functionality, you don't do security testing at all. Except for verifying the security mechanisms. Performance, on the other hand, um, verifies that you can stand a heavy enough load in real life environment. So it's repeating one of the conformance tests as fast as possible or in parallel. Robustness on the other hand or security, uh, robustness testing is much more be better term, um, tries to um, inject all possible unexpected uh, inputs to the software. So when conformance tests are traditionally considered positive tests, robustness tests are negative tests. Both of these have been used in the past, but dividing them is necessary at this point. On white box area, you have code auditing. It's always essential to do. You have fault injection. It's done in some expensive software projects, meaning you, for example, inject faults in the code or inject faults in the, uh, in the modular or process communication to find out the reliability of the software or component. Formal proofs, even more expensive, uh, means that you actually verify that, for example, encryption algorithm is really robust, secure. Auditing code, um, typically done manually, meaning you have code inspections, reviews, uh, but hopefully in the future more automatically. Uh, in auditing, code auditing, the most important thing is that you know what to look for. So it's all the same if you have thousands of open source developers look at, looking at the code. If they don't know what the security problem looks like, they will not find them. So essential in both code auditing tools, code auditing tools and auditors, people, uh, is that they know what to look for. You can have checklists, you can have uh, courses on secure programming, you, ha you can have different kind of means of collecting that data from past experiences of others. But basically, they look for structures in code that are known to be problematic. In black, black box testing, um, you don't have the source code, or you don't have you have it, but it's just too huge to go through using code auditing tools. Many of the code auditing tools even generate so many false positives, alarms that are not true, that you just spend all your time reviewing those. It's impossible if you start doing it at late phases of the software development project and with huge amount of code. Sometimes you don't have any expertise in secure programming. You don't have the people. You don't have enough people to review the code. Or you don't have any experience in having mistakes in your software. If you have quality assurance processes in place, you have to learn from your past mistakes. If you don't have any past mistakes, you don't have anything to learn from. For example, like programming languages like Java, uh, Symbian, many of these new fam 